what they need to do to win bubble games. So this way this flies through uh, like I just talked about.
Good morning, everyone. Thank you for your patient here, patience here in the sanctuary and at home. We're going to start our service right now by singing our opening chant, Grateful. And aren't we all this morning? <laughs> Grateful for the morning, grateful for the sunlight on my face, grateful for the feeling, grateful for the knowing, grateful for the love that's in this place, grateful for believing that God is all there is, that God is all there is, grateful for the morning. Grateful for the sunlight on my face, grateful for the feeling, grateful for the knowing, grateful for the love that's in this place, grateful for believing that God is all there is, that God is all there is. Grateful for the morning, grateful for the sunlight on my face, grateful for the feeling, grateful for the knowing, grateful for the love that's in this place, grateful for believing that God is all there is, that God is all God is all there is, and we are so grateful that you are here, whether you are in the room or at home in your Zoom room or your Facebook room. Let's all gather together and move up into that upper room of knowing of deep prayer as we just set the tone and the intention for today. Together we recognize that there is just one infinite loving presence and power. I call it God, I call it spirit, and I know it is that which is author of all life continually creating, expanding, and celebrating itself into everything and everyone. I know that it surrounds and fills us this day and that we are united in that intention for glorious living, glorious love, and to know that not just the sunlight on our face, but that light from within shines forth. I know that it guides this entire service. I know that the wisdom that we hear from Dr. Mark is free-flowing and perfect and wonderful. I know that which needs to be heard is heard. I bless the music. I know that Sam, I know that Sherry, and I know that Karen are all united in that same intention for divine creation. So how wonderful to know that we are all embraced in this intention, and I am grateful, grateful, grateful to know that it is a done deal. So I release this word into law, knowing it is already so, and together we say, amen. amen. So before we go further in this service, I want to invite Carol Winokur up. This is the last day of Hanukkah, and she's going to light the menorah for us and give us a little bit of wisdom about that. So I get to say a few words today. Hanukkah is a joyous occasion. Uh, it is a holiday celebrating freedom victory, miracles, and light. 250 years, no, in the second century BCE, the Syrian emperor decided to eradicate Judaism and enacted laws that made it illegal to practice Judaism. So people were being put to death when they did their observances. A small group of men called the Maccabees revolted against that and absolutely had a victory, but it took three years of fighting. The temple had to be restored, rededicated, cleaned out, and the first task was to relight the eternal flame. <clears throat> but there was only enough oil for just one night of the flame to last, and it was going to take them eight days in order to recreate the holy oil that they needed for that eternal flame. So they prayed, lit the, the one light, and the miracle that happened was that there were, the lights lasted, that one little bit of oil lasted for eight days. And that's what we celebrate. We celebrate the freedom that was won and the miracle that the light happened. So now I'm going to light 
the menorah, all eight lights here, because this is, as Sydney said, the eighth, 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 tonight will be the eighth night of Hanukkah. And we will say together the Hebrew prayer. What we have is on the screen the English and the Hebrew. Uh, there are two blessings. We will say the first blessing. I invite you all to join me. If you don't know the prayer, there's the transliteration there on the screen. You can read along. And if your words are a bit stumbly, that's OK. OK. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam asher kiddushanu b'mitzvotav v'tzivanu l'chad l'kner Hanukkah. Now we'll do the second blessing. Okay, we got it. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Sheasa nisim b'lavoteno b'yamim chachem bisman hazeh. And one final blessing to all of you. May you know the freedom, the light, and the miracles that this holiday represents. Amen. Carol is a practitioner, emeritus. She and I were in practitioner training together. Many years, should I say many years ago? A few years ago, we were three, just whiz kids with prayer. I would, um, we're, have, we're gonna have a chant now, right? Yes. Okay, we, sh we, if we, we shake it up and everything just kind of, you know, goes loose, goes rogue. Go ahead. <laughs> You are the face of God I hold you in my heart You are a part of me You are the face of God You are the face of God Now, would you please rise and join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now while you're standing, let's join in singing our congregational song, which is Deck the Halls. <laughs> Deck the halls with boughs of holly. Fa la 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 la. Tis the season 
to be jolly. La 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 la. Don we now our gay apparel. La 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 la. Troy the ancient Yuletide carol. La 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 la. See the blazing you'll be for us. La 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 la. Strike the harp and join the chorus. of the winter weather la 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 Oh, you're beautiful! So please be seated. We're going to take the next five minutes and join together in silent meditation. I invite you to just relax and drop deep into yourself and allow the silence to guide you into that place of deep wisdom, deep love, and deep knowing. If you're comfortable, close your eyes. Repeat the mantra, God's the love that I am. If you find yourself strained, come back to center. God's the love that I am. And I will bring us out of this meditation in five minutes.
silver bells and mistletoe smiling faces hearts aglow love is everywhere you go it's that time of year people show they care we never get too old to share it's that time of year hear the children singing Santa's on his way they know soon He'll be bringing lots of toys upon his sleigh. Decorate, put up the tree, light the lights so all can see that Christ was born for you, for me. It's that time of children singing Santa's on his way They know soon he'll be bringing lots of toys upon his sleigh Decorate put up the tree Sherry Williams, everyone. All right, well, good morning. Thank you for being here with us in church, uh, on Facebook, on Zoom. We're happy you're with us today. I'm going to talk today, uh, my topic is Decide to be Healthy. Um, so in our textbook, Ernest Holmes says this. He said, the soul is on a journey. The journey is back to the Father's house, and everybody makes it. I love that because I was so sure I was not on that last ship that was going to make it. Uh, so I find that very encouraging. So what does this have to do um, with our health? So first of all, I want to say that every soul comes in right, with a journey of their own. Um, and at some point, the soul is going to move on to the next expression. But until that time, this is what I have for you, okay? That it's easy, I find, that what people do is that it's very easy for them to scoff at what they don't understand uh, rather than investigate it. And this is particularly, not particularly, especially true around spiritual things, if you know what I mean. Uh, it, it is true we can change the subjective or subconscious pattern 
of our belief. Now, this, this is what the science of mind teaches us. We can change that subjective pattern of belief. There's no conflict between spiritual mind healing, which is what we do in the science of mind, and Western medicine. Right? Science of mind says God works through all of it. So if you think it's more spiritual to do without this or more spiritual to not go to the doctor, you're making that up. That is not the science of mind teaching. Science of mind is God works through all of it, and the way it works is whatever you are most receptive to, God will work through that medium on your behalf. When we are well, I think one of the things we have to start with is being grateful for and praising our own good health. You know, so every day I'm saying, thank you, God, for my good health. Thank you, God, for my perfect health. Thank you, God, for the energy to do what I need to do, on and on and on. Um, you've heard me speak in the past, and this is just a regular practice for me, is that I have a little gratitude journal. And in that gratitude journal, I list everything that I'm grateful for at the end of the day. Now, if you do it first thing in the morning, the important thing is that you do it, that you have a little place that you... Write out longhand, can't do it on your computer, I'm sorry, there's something that happens in the writing it out. What future generations will do, I don't know. <laughs> but this is, I, I know this works. You, you write out what you're grateful for. Because the principle involved in this is that what we're grateful for expands. What you give your attention to increases. But what we take our attention away from, which is what people so often do around their health, when they're healthy. They take it for granted. And the principle around this is that what we take for granted diminishes. Ooh, I don't like that at all. So it seems to me that people very often take their good health for granted. Now, this is spiritually true. Health is normal, right? Sickness is abnormal. All things respond to self-recognition, including our health. So this is why I want to recognize my good health and give voice to it on a daily basis. Thank you, God, for my perfect health. Thank you, God, for my perfect health. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, but my health isn't perfect. How can I say that? It's easy, just like this. Thank you, God, for my perfect health. <laughs> really, this is how it's going to improve. See, it, we don't wait for the condition to be what we want to do the affirmation. We do the affirmation knowing that, in truth, that condition is already so. You know, the, the greater truth is already there to be revealed. When we do a good job, we all like to be praised, right? Don't we? Sure, everybody does. Everybody likes to be recognized for their efforts. And this includes with our health. You know, the more you impress your subconscious mind with the normalcy and the value of health, the more secure you are in your health. See, it seems that life is a, um, a science, and you have to follow its laws to keep on living in health. So I think, you know, we have to make up our minds, like really make up your mind. Like when you make a decision, you're going forward, and there's no way on earth that you are going back. That's the kind of making up your mind I'm talking about. Make up your mind to be healed. Or if you don't do that, know this, that the different things you try, they will probably not help you unless you make up your mind first I am going to be healed. And we have to know, you know, the, these physical conditions, the episodes that we experience, the problems, are actually unnecessary. Now, I know people, people go into hope. Now, I think hope is better than not hope, but I don't think that hope is enough. I really don't. We have to decide, right? I want to be well. I expect to be well. I am well. Our subjective mind which is the operating system of our physical body, cannot start to create a healthy body until the conscious mind acts with authority, right? Conscious mind in charge with, with a decision to be healthy. You know, so the subconscious mind can have been busy for years gradually building a sick body, and we wouldn't even know it because we have not been giving the energy and the attention and the instruction to our subconscious mind on an ongoing basis to produce health. It will continue creating the illness patterns until it receives a clear and meaningful order from the conscious mind to cease. Right? This is why hope is not enough. Hope doesn't carry any authority with it. 
you know, it's kind of, yeah, it's wishy-washy. You know, it's, it's, like I said, it's better than not hope, but we want that authority, right? It lacks the serious emotional impact that the subconscious mind has to have if it's going to reverse itself. So this is not so easy to do, to reverse our subconscious patterns. To do a 180 and produce health takes a lot of determination. I would not kid you about that. It takes clear thinking on the part of our conscious mind and it can, and can only think clearly once a decision has been made. You get that? Your conscious mind can only think really clearly and your subconscious mind can only produce clearly the result, the effect you want, if a decision has been made. You know, modern metaphysical, feel, modern metaphysical healing, say that three times, modern metaphysical healing began about the 1860s with Phineas Parkhurst Quimby and Mary Baker Eddy, the Fillmores from Unity, Nana Brooks from Divine Science, on and on and on. The people in the 1860s were catching on to this. And what they were catching on to is that your body always responds to your belief about it. Now, let's sit with that for a moment. My body responds to my belief about it. <gasps> Note to self, got to change a few things I've been thinking. Louise Hay says this. She says that when we think about our body, whether there is a problem there or not, what we should say is, I love and appreciate my body. And if you have a particular area, say you have a sore throat, you say, I love and appreciate my throat. I love and appreciate my stomach. I love and appreciate my shoulder. Right? Whatever it is, if I make a weak conscious decision, to be well, or a weak conscious decision to be healthy. Yeah, I'd like to be healthy, yeah. But at the same time, a definite subconscious decision to be sick, yeah, I'd like to be well, but I'm probably not gonna be, right? Which one of those carries the weight? The subconscious will always, always win out. This is true in any area of our life and certainly in the area of health. We have to raise our spiritual conviction. God is right now expressing in your body as life. God is right now expressing in your body as health. So repeating statements of truth cause your subconscious mind to respond by corresponding, right? So you need to know that God as health, you know, we need to all know God as health and health is absolutely normal. It is our right. You have to decide that you are going to be well. Are you with me so far, please? Okay, good. So once you make the decision, and mean it, your mind and your body will go to work, but not until you make that decision. So health, our healthy beingness is a yes system. Dis-ease is a no system. Life responds to affirmative thinking. Now, when we talk about affirmative thinking here, we're not trying to make something happen by affirming. Eric Butterworth, in his wonderful book, Spiritual Economics, talks about this. He says, we don't affirm something to make it true. That would be willpower. And Ernest Holmes is very clear. We are not using willpower in the science of mind. Right? We don't affirm to make something true. We affirm because it is already true in the mind of God. And we're just calling it forth into greater expression. So it's already so. I'm not, you know, and people, I think, misunderstand affirmations by thinking, oh, I'm going to, you know, do this like, you know, Mercedes Benz, Mercedes Benz, Mercedes Benz, you know, and you know, that'll work. Honestly, it does. It works. I tell you, I've tried it. I've done it. It works. But as soon as you stop doing that, it goes away. And people say, what happened? I thought I had the consciousness. I created this greater good, but you didn't have the consciousness to sustain it. Right. And so that's, that's what's missing there. <sighs> Once you make the decision and mean it, your mind and body go to work on it. Life created you out of itself, that you might enjoy the experience of living in health and well-being. So God created you to enjoy living your life. There has never been a spiritual design for sickness. God never intends illness for us in any way. The infinite mind knows nothing of illness. It only knows itself as health. God in me, God in you, is health right now. And when you start thinking like God is thinking, your recovery is pretty certain. See, there's a spiritual, 
uh, a spiritual wealth of healing power within each of us. And it's just waiting for our affirmative call upon it, right? It begins its perfect work when you decide to be healthy and think as health would think. So ask yourself this, if I were perfectly healthy today, how would I be thinking of myself? How would I be thinking of my body? How would I be speaking to my body? What would I be feeding my body? Would I be exercising my body? What would I, if you were absolutely, absolutely 102% healthy right now today, how would you think? How would you view yourself? And how would you be treating your body temple? See, you are the only thinker in your mind. And you have to have a healthy mind in order to have a healthy body. If you think about it, there's nobody out there with a healthy mind and a sick body, right? I mean, there's, there's, there's some, something's going on there, right? So I have a healthy mind in a healthy body, and I'm having a healthy experience of life. That's the kind of thing we should be saying to ourselves all the time. I have a healthy mind. I have a healthy body. I'm having a healthy experience of life. Yes, yes. So in Proverbs, I found this, and I thought this was so good. It says, whoso keepeth his mouth and his tongue keepeth his soul from troubles. In other words, if you don't uh, complain, if you don't talk about what you don't want, if you don't focus on the negativities, then you're going to be saved from a lot of trouble. See, we have to make, I would like us all today to get a mental image of ourselves as being as healthy as we could ever want to be. So start to have an image of that. So what we're doing is that we're starting to create a little mental equivalent. So you might find a picture of somebody who's in good shape in a magazine and cut that out and then put your picture on their face. Yeah, absolutely. And look at that every day. You know, and you're thinking, oh, well, that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. Well, you know, we've got to start somewhere and we've got to start to catch an image of our own well-being. Right? So a, a mental image of yourself as healthy. And you can use your imagination to expand your consciousness of well-being. Picture yourself as radiant, as whole, as filled with energy and aliveness and vitality, perfect in every way. And ask yourself, how would I look and feel as a healthy person? See, something should be coming to you even now. Again and again, we face the lie of illness with the truth of health. This is what we do in the science of mind. This is the healing process. You picture yourself as the truth of health, and you keep this picture activated in your imagination. That's why I like the little magazine idea. I really do. That true health is based on this. God is life. There we have it. And, and that life is my life right now. So sickness cannot destroy health. It only causes it to go underground, if you will, and await reactivation. People say, well, I didn't plan on being sick. I understand. I understand. But did you plan on a daily basis on being vital and well and healthy and energetic and in perfect balance and all of those things? I believe absolutely for each and every one of us, God wants us to be healthy. So I am health, not just healthy. I am life. I'm not just alive. And remember, health is a state of consciousness that permeates the whole being. I accept that for all of us today. I invite you to turn your attention inward with me for a moment as we do a little piece of inner work together, okay? So close your eyes and bring your awareness to the pattern of your breathing. And just be still with me for a moment. Breathing in and out. Today, I claim for each and every one of us healing of anything that stands between us and total well-being in life. Today, I claim the healing power, the healing presence, the healing light, the healing love of the universal mind as our divine right. Today, I claim healing in all of our affairs, in all of our relations, in all of our relationships. I claim healing in my conscious and in my subconscious mind. I claim healing in my total being. I claim for each and every one of us right now that we are healed from our past. And I claim healing for our future. I claim healing in our body temple, our finances, for our loved ones. I claim that no harm comes near me or my dwelling place. No harm comes near those I love. I acknowledge, I accept, and I acclaim that I 
by myself do nothing. It's the Father, Mother, God within me that's doing the work. All is well in my mind and my body and my life. And for this, I am so grateful. And we include now everyone we love and hold near and dear, parents and children, friends, family members, and we surround them with a mantle of God's peace and love and healing, and we know that perfect life is right where they are. We let our prayer be a blessing in the world, so wherever there's the appearance of trouble, of discord, of separation, we claim that that oneness is there right now, that perfect healing, peace, harmony is the order of the day. We bless our church, we bless all churches everywhere, synagogues and temples and mosques, ashrams, all paths to God. And I'm certain that we are blessed by being together today in worship, in consciousness, in fellowship. I know everyone gets raised up, that there's good here for each and every one of us and we ought to have it. And so with a grateful heart, I give thanks, I release this word into God's perfect law, and so it is, together we all say, Amen. All right, let's sing one time together. I am so blessed, I am so blessed, I am so grateful for all that I so blessed I am so blessed I am so grateful I am so blessed all right I invite you to hold your gift over your heart as we say our statement of giving together from the love of pure spirit within me I bless this gift I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper it is evidence of my faith and belief it does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you very much.
how still we see thee lie above thy deep and dreamless sleep the silent stars go by oh morning stars together proclaim the holy child is this who lay to rest on Mary's lap is sleeping whom angels greet with anthem sweet while shepherds watch are keeping this this is Christ the King whom shepherds guard while angels sing haste haste to bring him Lord the babe the son of Mary so bring him incense, gold and myrrh. Come, peasant king, to own him. The king of kings, salvation brings. Let loving hearts enthrone him. Raise, raise a song on high. The virgin sings her lullaby. Joy, joy, for Christ is born. The babe, the son of man. sings her lullaby joy joy for christ is born the babe the son of mary mary the babe the son the holy child the babe is born the son of mary the son of mary Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, I move that we lock the doors and that we just stay here. Yeah? The eyes have it. You're, you're, oh my, thank you. You have a new Christmas album. You have a new CD. Yes. You can take her home with you. We can all do that. You'll be selling it out on the patio. You are a goddess. Thank you so much. Okay, I've got a few announcements, so just bear with me. You can make donations in a number of ways to this community, and we ask that you do that, because look at us, we're coming back, and we want to bring the band back, and we want to do all of that stuff. So, you can call the office, 762-7566. You can go to our website, anhcrs.org slash give. Text the word give to 818-457-3419. Ah, you know what? Prayer with a practitioner is available right after this service in person and on Zoom. So if you're on Facebook, make the leap. On Wednesday night, Reverend Sydney, oh, that's me. Um, <laughs> at 6.50, we have a meditation. The service is at 7. And this week, my topic is looking for light in all the right places. Uh, our youth church is open, by the way. We, they start at 9.45, so bring the kids. We welcome youth of all ages. Um, our 2022 Journey of the Heart pledge forms are still available online and in the foyer. So please, please, please do that. Uh, the women's group is having a holiday sing-along today at 11.30 in the youth church. Mary Hyland is going to be leading songs, and she's also a goddess. Um, so all women are welcome. The men's group is meeting in the Ernest Holmes room at 11. And, oh, by the way, thank you for all of you who participated in the Christmas Giving Tree event. <laughs> at last count, we are sponsoring 88 children. 
Oh my goodness. And also, Gail buys, she gets all the stuff that we give her, the money, and she gets toiletries, and we take care of the parents, and we, all, we do all of that. She's going to be collecting Target and Viarta gift cards. So we would love to continue that spirit. They're going to be, this Thursday is Santa and, and the giving event. So if you want to be a part of that, connect with her. Uh, oh, Friday. This Friday the 10th, my husband and I, who he plays guitar and he sings, we are having a Christmas sing-along event right here in this sanctuary. And it's going to be fun. Oh, that was just a smattering, wasn't it? <laughs> this is also a chance for you to all wear your very fun holiday sweaters. Now, I have a bet with Dr. Mark that my holiday sweater will be uglier than his. So we'll see. You better come. And you can compete in this, too. There are no prizes other than just the big burst of ego that makes you know you did it. Um, youth Christmas program is Sunday, December 12th, that's a week from today, at 1115 sharp. Join us, bring the kids, bring all the kids you know for a fun and festive event. We're going to be singing carols, telling stories. There's a rumor that Mrs. Ca Claus, who was the trophy wife of Santa Claus, will be bringing her husband. <laughs> and we'll have elves. We have some new elves, too. I'm going to be selfie elfie. Okay. Um, we have a new Christmas Eve candlelight service, and that will be Friday, December 24th at 7 o'clock. We hope that you will join us in person on Zoom or Facebook. It's an all-new, beautiful, spiritual, metaphysical experience of Christmas Eve, and I, and I just think that you will love it. We will have readings, we will have music, and of course, candle lighting. Um, our bookstore is open for 30 minutes after service every Sunday. Please stop by. Um, by the way, if you are on Zoom, you may already know this or maybe not, but before and after Sunday and Wednesday services, there's a patio so you can hang. Um, there's also Zoom meditation every morning, Monday through Saturday at 8 o'clock, and it's lovely. What a great way to start your day, 8 a.m. So um, please go to our website to get more information, to get the links, and just to subscribe to our e-blasts and our monthly newsletters. There's a lot going on here. I think I've done everything. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Sherry. Would you please rise? We're going to sing our peace song. So please repeat after me, I'm at, I'm at home in the heart of God. My life is anchored in truth. Is anchored in truth. I, can I can never be separate. I live in the consciousness of peace. I release all fear. I am living love. I am living love. Amen. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> Big shoe dance. <laughs>